welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, and as always, I have a very special guest for you, two lovely ladies in the house tonight, Yvette Allen Campbell and Dr. Suzanne Greenwich Hewitt, authors of Black, Pregnant, and Loving It. They're with us tonight for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. Like I said, two beautiful ladies tonight getting a treat. Yvette Allen Campbell, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Lydia. You're very welcome. And Dr. Suzanne, of Great. course. Nice to be Greenwich. here, Lydia. You are here with us as well. The two ladies together wrote an amazing book, which we'll go all details in about in just a couple minutes. But it's called Black, Pregnant, and Loving It. So ladies, officially, welcome to the program. Thank, Thank you. you. So Kanda, I'll start with you, Yvette. Sure. Why don't you tell us a little bit about how this all got started for you, life before being an author. Okay. Well, um, actually, the concept came about to me a good number of years ago, a couple of decades ago, actually, when I was a supervisor with, um, with the New York City Public School System. I had the job as a new supervisor to um, go to a number of schools supervising therapists across a number of boroughs um, in the city. I had to go to Brooklyn, Queens, and the Bronx. Mm -hmm. And as I trekked to these boroughs, I um, found myself walking into school buildings, um, which um, I could have easily spent the morning in a school within a community that could have been one of the most economically depressed communities probably in the state, and later on that afternoon, I could have been in the same borough, um, walking into a, a school within a community that was a straight middle income community. However, irrespective of the community that the school was in, mm -hmm. the children that I found sitting in seats of special education were little black boys and girls. And um, that worried me. I was concerned about the trajectory of these children's lives, and I wanted to know um, in addition to what was being discussed at that time, and probably to some degree still, as variables as to why there was this disparity, um, such as perhaps um, uh, testing instruments that weren't culturally sensitive, or even Absolutely. pedagogical staff that didn't reflect the children's cultural background. I wanted to know, in addition to those very valid variables, were there any real differences between the way black children develop and how white children develop? And I began um, a little study on my own mm -hmm. to actually get a sense of were there any differences. And that's when I was astonished to find that twice as many black infants are born with low birth weight than white infants right here in the United States. And that's interesting. low birth weight is essentially developmentally delayed. So, um, and also I should add at that time, three times as many black women um, were susceptible to death um, as a result of pregnancy, of complications of pregnancy and childbirth. And I, um, I thought that was unconscionable. I wanted to know what was on the market to inform women of the significance of this time. It's I remember great. walking into my Barnes & Noble or my local bookstore and realizing that there was a lot of material on the topic of pregnancy and childbirth. As I flipped through those books, um, I saw picture after picture, a very happy white woman enthusiastic about being pregnant and I saw pictures of cute white babies in these books mm -hmm. and then I begged the question well, where are the where are pictures we? of the very happy proud black women holding their bellies very enthusiastic about being pregnant and where are the pictures of the cute black babies in these books um, and then I would read texts such as don't be alarmed if your skin reddens or pinkens it's due to those pregnancy hormones I thought, wow, how, how unfortunate, you know, black women and their babies are disproportionately at risk for adverse birth outcomes. And the material that's available for them wasn't even written for them. That's when I said, someone should write a book on pregnancy for black women. That is really, really Walked into good. Harlem Hospital, and I met up with Dr. Dr. Greenwich. <laughs> Dr. Greenwich, the floor is yours, my dear. Yeah, Yvette came in, and 
she presented this wonderful opportunity and 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 I was astonished by you know reading more and more into it how many uh, how significant this was going to be for our black women that we decided to produce a book that was going to be colorful was going to have a lot of photos was going to have a lot of information and that was our dream that was our dream to have a book that you know was just filled with uh, models of black women that we can uh, display because all the books that we picked up that did uh, that were on the market that were for uh, black women did not have um, pictures of black women and it was just text and we decided that you know what let's get together and just do a book and that would be very interesting for black women to open up and read and be very informative at the same time so I was very blessed mm -hmm. to have Yvette walk through Harlem <laughs> Hospital with this great opportunity and um, I gravitated to it, and we've been writing together for 20-something uh, years now. <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. So you mentioned Harlem Hospital. Yes. So kind of b b rewind that a little bit. So Har what were you doing at Harlem Hospital? What's your position yeah. at that time? At that time, I was a resident in the um, field of obstetrics and gynecology. And I was uh, so you have in solid my last background year. in this yes. to begin with. Solid background. I was delivering a lot of the young black boys and girls that Yvette was just talking about. So I actually was living it and seeing. Um, unfortunately, it was during the um, crack era and cocaine mm -hmm. era. So there were a lot of babies that were born preterm, and um, so we were. Harlem Hospital had, you know, wards that were filled with these um, birth weight. Um, low birth weight babies. So I was living this dream and here comes Yvette talking about this and I said, well, yeah, I'm living this. This is what I'm seeing all, all the time. And it, it's funny that you mentioned that actually because something that I was just reading on just overall, there is an, a, a section of babies that's called crack babies, mm -hmm. like, you know, for your parents. And it's kind of nice to actually have someone who could shed some light on that because right. we've never really, you read about it, mm -hmm. but having witnessed that, kind of share what were some of the key components that really affected the community of this? Well, you know, what used to really bother us as residents when we were at Harlem Hospital, um, it's amazing because there is the bad side and the withdrawal side of, of taking cocaine or crack uh, in which these babies were delivered. And because they were in the environment of a drug, when they came out, they had a lot of jittering and, you know, uh, they just... Mm -hmm. We're going through withdrawal, basically. So that was one problem. But more than that, what we really found interesting and what we just didn't really like was the fact that the cocaine and the crack actually sped up these infants to their lungs were mature. So you would see these little infants coming out and actually screaming and yelling, although they went through their stages, you know, mm -hmm. later on. But then you would see other women who didn't take the drug and come out and their babies couldn't breathe. And so we felt like, wow, isn't this, you know, it's the irony of it, the irony of the fact that, you know, you have crack babies that come out and they're breathing and screaming, of course, going through withdrawal later. But then you have a woman who did everything right, mm -hmm. didn't take any drugs and for unfortunately had either um, ruptured membranes um, or preterm labor and delivered, uh, you know, before 34 weeks, and their baby was intubated and was struggling to survive. So we, we saw a lot of that, lot. and uh, we thought that was very interesting. Well, hold that thought. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel sitting here with the authors of Black, Pregnant, and Loving It. This book, I love the title, first of all, because as a black female, 
you don't see anything like this really out there, um, whether it's online or in bookstores. So when someone goes to pick up a copy of this, of course, this is not just for mother. I'm not a mother, but I think it could relate to it because I think there's a lot of great information mm -hmm. that would be in there for future mothers yeah, as absolutely. well. That's right. yeah. So kind of share some info on that. So uh, certainly the book is available wherever books are sold. You can go on to Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, Indie Books. Um, you can also go to our website at www.blackpregnantandlovingit.com to pick up a copy of your own personal copy of Black Pregnant and Loving It. For you, Dr. Greenish, what were some of the main factors when you were writing this and really selecting what made the cut to be in the book? Oh, there's so many years things. of, of yeah, the the love. Yeah, yes. 20 years of love. Um, you know, there, there are a lot of things in this book that is just wonderful for black women. Um, if I had to highlight for me being an obstetrician gynecologist, of course, I'm going to have to talk about the medical issues and those issues being um, hypertension. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have a category of gestational hypertension. We have chronic hypertension. We go over all those, you know, um, diseases in the book and de and define them and actually give you uh, model patients to to see what it's all about. And also preterm labor, fibroids. Fibroids is so mm -hmm. big for for black women because. 80% of our women have fibroids. Is so, it that many? Yeah, yeah. And 70% of the normal population, so 80% of um, black women have fibroids. So therefore, you know, being pregnant and having fibroids is a common thing. Not, not all fibroids, uh, you know, cause a problem, but we talk about it in the book and we give uh, sample patients to, to follow along. Asthma, we talk about, uh, diabetes. Um, I also love the fact that we give, um, you know, diet and, and mm -hmm. uh, some great tips on um, basically soul food That's type of right. uh, and healthy, um, healthy meals for our patients. Um, this is a book that is a great gift for all black women, even before they get pregnant, because we talk about preconception and what things oh, you really? should do. Yeah. So these are all important things, but there, there are many things. I think one of the best things that Yvette really came up with that I really love is the ancestral wisdom. And uh, she yes. can tell you a little yes. bit more yes. about yes. that. Yes. So um, it's ancestry wisdom. It's flashback, you know, from our ancestors, information that is intended to be lighthearted and in in entertainment. It's certainly um, reading passages about some of the disorders and, and trying to fully uh, wrap your head around um, what it will take to maintain a healthy pregnancy for yourself and for your baby is important. But we also wanted a little bit of a celebration mm -hmm. and information about how our great-great-grandmothers were able to maintain a strong black race in light of the fact that they did not have the advances mm -hmm. of modern medicine is precious. And mm -hmm. that's why we felt it so important to have those those segments in, in the book. We follow the pregnancy of a beautiful black woman. And every month of, 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 of her pregnancy, we, um, we have a little bit of a flashback from, from our past. We also add as a recurring feature, um, which is important to all of us women, probably to some degree, is um, pregnancy and my, my significant other. Right, and so we talk a little bit right. about um, the journey of becoming parents together with your significant other, and some of the issues that may en encroach upon the couple, and what you can do to um, to help yourselves through that process as you go on your journey to parenthood. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. Um, it seems like there's a lot, a wealth of information that's in here that I think a lot of people could benefit from. So I think it just looks like it's an overall great read. Mm -hmm. um, something that always kind of struck my mind, you would hear stories, especially from older people, you would hear women, you know, they've worked right until the very end, yes. you know. Mm -hmm. Our great grandmothers, like you would say, like they didn't, they would have a full belly never had sonograms. Exactly. They yeah. had four or five kids around them at the same time. And, and healthy like, ones. And very yeah. healthy. Yeah. 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 And it's like, it seems now, I think I heard someone say women are very coddled now. And I was like, what do you mean that we're mm -hmm. coddled? They're like, well, you can't work. Sometimes you feel like you have to, unless you're on bed rest. But I mean, a lot of times there's just, I think these came out of safety from, they have had mishaps over the years, of mm -hmm. course. But then looking back, you know, you do kind of see that, you know, your great-grandmother, she might have been cutting cane and mm -hmm. 
with the baby strapped on exactly. to her and doing what she